So, I was talking a little bit about the hidden dynamics of relationships and every relationship that you enter into in life, be it parent, child, wife, husband, brother, sis, sister, siblings, all relationships have a healthy dynamic and a type of dynamic that is dysfunctional. They have all relationships to one degree or another serve a purpose. So they're either functional or dysfunctional based on the dynamics of those relationships. And you can analyze the underlying structure of the relationship and find out what the problem is when there is dysfunction in the relationship. It's a lot more obvious if you look at the structure of the relationship instead of the personalities involved. Now, let's take some examples of these relationships. Or one example of these types of relationship, pastor, congregant. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting one. Or authority figure and student. Teacher and student, authority figure and person who is supposed to, who is, you know, person in the congregation with the ears listening to the authority figure. And one of the things, this is one of the reasons why there are so many atheists who used to be fundamentalists. And a lot of these were the smarter kids in the congregation. You take people like Drew and Dan, those were probably the two smartest kids in their church group and probably some of the smartest kids in their town. Now, are they really all that dazzlingly intelligent? I don't know. They're, they're about as smart as most of the people I hung out with at college. Most of the people in my band were as smart as they are. They're okay. They're, they're pretty sharp. They're probably in the top 5% of the smartest people. Mm, yeah, I guess 5%. But they were probably the smartest person in their congregation, part, smartest person in their church group. And they were paying attention, not necessarily those two, but in general, the atheists who used to be fundamentalist Christians were paying attention. And they are listening to you, the pastor. And one of the most important things about the, you, the pastor, in the relationship of authority figure to the person paying attention is do you have credibility? Do you actually know what you're talking about? And if you don't, you're going to lose them. Why? Because they're listening and they're paying attention. They are listening and they're paying attention. If you start talking to them and you don't know anything about life or anything about what, you're, what you are talking about, that is eventually going to show up. Now, the Bible says a way to, to know that. You shall know them by their fruits. Another type of way the Bible talks about these type of pastors is having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. The Bible tells you, from such withdraw yourself. From such withdraw yourself. Why? Because they don't know what they're talking about. You shall know them by their fruits. And... I, you know, I've had atheists say to me, how do you know my pastors, my pastors, was it so arrogant of you to presume that my pastors didn't know what they're talking about? I know him by his fruits. What? You, <laughs> the atheist, duh. Yeah, rocket science. He's a great pastor, set the world on fire. He really knows everything about God. And that's why you're an atheist today? No, it doesn't work like that. He didn't know anything. Or you wouldn't be an atheist. He didn't have any juice in his, any moho in his preaching or power in his congregation. Or you wouldn't be an atheist. Duh. It's not rocket science. It's pretty straightforward. Now, one of the ways in which preachers famously undercut their own credibility is they do not know anything about the real world or life or how life actually works. One of the best ways that comes up a lot, the satanic panic preacher. There's devil. The devil's going to get you. Ah, devil. Devil's out there. Devil's going to get you. Turn on the TV. Oh, don't turn on the TV. It's the devil. <laughs> no, no. Don't listen to my music. The devil. Like I said, these are the smarter kids in your congregation and they are paying attention. And you are undercutting your own authority by establishing quite clearly for the people paying attention that you have no credibility. If you mouth off too many times about the evils of X or the dangers of X, and the smart kid in the congregation is paying attention. Oh, don't listen to album X, whatever you do. Why? Because it's so dangerous, it's the devil. The smart kid in your congregation is paying attention, and he knows somewhere deep inside of himself, and one day he's going to test you out. And he's going to go listen to that album, find out, sky didn't fall. Sky didn't fall. Nothing hurt me. No demons jumped out of the album and tried to kill me. So what? So what? You undercut your credibility. Any halfway intelligent kid knows that there is very little way that any record, even if it was made by the devil himself, it was, if the record was produced by demons and it was written by the devil himself and played by, you know, the boogeyman demon crew, there's very little that playing music is going to do to anybody to cause them harm. Yeah, it may, it may harm your spiritual walk. It may make you, you know, fine. So you become like a little gangster rapper and not quite as good of a Christian. But no way it's actually going to harm you. So to loudly intone the dangers of this or that undercuts your credibility. And it makes you ridiculous to them. 
and now you have what were people who were former see a lot of the people who were christian who were atheists now were christians then and they were attentive christians and studious christians and really trying to absorb you know really trying to pay attention and learn sit at the front of the class and raise their hand and, and answer all the questions type christians and they were paying attention and you under much undermined your own credibility that's what you did you helped produce atheists i shall know you by your fruits now we got now we got kids who are atheists and they think church in general has no power or christianity in general has no power or the bible has nothing to teach them or god himself doesn't even exist because you undermine the credibility of these sacred institutions by not knowing what you were talking about that's what happened honestly that's what happened to a certain degree that's exactly what happened and you know that's all amen